Well, I guess I'll re-say that. Hi, everybody. It's August 8th, and you're here at the Chaos Community Week. Um, just because I wasn't ready yet to share. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, if you were or just joining us, you missed an incredibly interesting conversation about insects that we just had. So, yes, some awesome favorite insects from our Chaos Community folks. Um, yeah. If you have not added your name and you'd like to, you know the you know the you know the routine. You feel free to do that if you don't want to. That's also valid. We do not care here. And just quick reminder: this is under our chaos code of conduct, so please keep that in mind as you interact with us. And um, you're welcome to keep your cameras off or on, whatever you want. Feel free to chat, and I will actually open the chat so I don't miss anything. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you all know, you all know. Um, first thing on the agenda is we do still have tickets to all things open, so if you are interested in attending that conference and you would like to get a ticket on behalf of chaos, please just reach out to me and um, we have quite a few and if we run out, we can still get passes at um, the early bird price of $99, which is a pretty good deal for a jam packed jam packed um, conference, you can learn more about it here. The only thing we would ask is that you take a few shifts to help us staff the chaos booth. That would be excellent. Um, but yeah, if you want that, no, uh, you do have to get there on your own as well. There's not travel included in that. So just let me know if you're interested in taking advantage of that. Or if you have any questions about it, you can just reach out to me. No problem at all. Uh, second thing on the agenda is that we have another new badger orientation for anybody who's interested in learning about how to be a DEI event badger. Um, you can join us on August 17th at 9 a.m. Uh, or 3 p.m. West Africa time. Uh, you do not have to know anything about chaos. You do not have to know anything about our badging or anything about metrics, really. Um, we will go through the whole process from start to finish. And it's no commitment. Uh, you can just see if you like it. And then at the end of that orientation, if you do want to sign up as a badger, you have the opportunity to do so, but you're not on the hook for anything at all. Um, so it's a good, it's a good um, meeting if you just want to learn about the badging. You could, that's also valid. You can just show up and, and learn about that. Uh, you don't have to register, but if you do want to be added to the calendar invite, just let me know and I'll add you. So you have that in your personal calendar as a reminder. Any questions about that? Are we still doing, you feel like we're okay in terms of the number of people that you have signing I, up? Yeah, I think so. I think we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, and then I think, especially by the time in the fall, when we get that more influx of, uh, of, of new applicants, we'll be, we should be pretty, pretty good. Okay. Okay. And how is the while we're kind of on badging, how is the um, how's that working at the moment? Because I've seen a few like miscalculations. Is that do we need to take a look at that again, or is that okay? Yeah, Enix been working on it. Um, something was going on. Just for those who didn't see or don't watch the repo, there was an application that came through that the um, percent was 102 <laughs> percent which was great but also what um, and it kind of threw it through the badging bot for a loop and issued a pending badge and so um enoch was working on figuring out how that happened um and then it was offline for a little bit so in the meantime we had some applications and so we were trying to run checklists and results and things so i think there's a little bit like maybe three applications that are kind of hanging out there until enoch gets it going again um i think it would be great if we had i mean i feel bad that enoch is like the point person for this so um i know he has a team that works on this so maybe that's something we should chat about at the uh, dei working group is just like get, getting him some help because i mean this started as a google summer of code project and then he's just kind of been on the hook ever since and so um then maybe there's a better solution for that i don't know yeah i think that's a good idea i wouldn't mind getting some help for Enoch and if I don't know if we need to re-examine the the bot that issues the badge like is it designed in such a way that is sustainable should we I don't know I don't know just talk about it yeah and I mean you know like I will say 90 percent of the time it works great and fine it's just when we have like a an uh, an edge case that we didn't expect okay. <laughs> and it kind of it, it kind of just you know shuts everything down though so um it'd be great if we have space for 
that to happen and also to keep the bot going, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Hi, Elizabeth. Can you hear me? Hi, yes. Yeah, this is Adelita. Um, at the African Dev Focus Group meeting, we kind of uh, discussed on how we can get more maintenance for the, uh, <clears throat> the budget uh, book. So we are working on that. So that is just not enough. Um, that has to look into the whole kind of problem. So the next one want to is to have some. Okay, that's great news. Yes, thank you, Erika. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. Um, does do you do you need an or I guess I should say, do you think we need to continue the conversation then in the DEI working group, or do you think it's kind of well in hand? What do you think? Um, I will reach out to you in the DEI. I just need us to uh, come together to figure out how the bot works, because not every one can be a little bit So getting familiar, familiar with the bot will help a lot, and we are working on that. OK. So um, we're, we're going to actually, I'll take this off then, because it sounds like we don't really need to talk about it more. OK. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll just ask. Eh, Maybe we'll just ask Enoch or whoever happens to be at that meeting um, to give just a quick update for those folks as well. So yeah. Or, just come to this call. It, or maybe even just put like an update in the badging Slack channel. Mm -hmm. Really helpful. Okay, awesome. All right, any other questions or comments? Anything about badging, DEI event badging? Um, okay, let's go on. Uh, Matt, I'm totally putting you on the spot here because I, I don't think you were able to share this with this group because I think it came up after this meeting last week. Is that right? Mm, maybe. Oh, yeah, because I don't know. It's okay. You can put it up. Okay. Either way, the, uh, there was just a conversation to um, kind of articulate the role for the chaos liaisons, and that's what this document is. Um, and it's just about meeting attendance, kind of the expectations. So again, the liaisons are a role in the chaos community to help kind of bridge between our different context groups. So OSPO, Scientific Software and University. Um, and then kind of connect any new metrics or metrics models that come from those groups and kind of connect them with either the metrics models working group or the common working group so that they can actually be developed. Because a lot of times, for those of you that attend OSPO or University or Scientific Software, those conversations, we don't usually drop into sharing a Google Doc and then off, you know working on that Google Doc in the meeting. So it's really just kind of about identifying things that could be helpful in those different contexts. And so the actual development of the metrics we're proposing to have done in common or uh, metric model. Um, and so this is just an expectation on attending meetings, um, as well as just kind of how to um, move that metric or metric model uh, through the process of being developed, um, which includes presenting it to common or metrics models, kind of talking about what it is, working on the development there, and then bringing it back to the respective context group to which you're a liaison and talk about the work that's been done and kind of if, if this is making sense in that particular context group. And that's really about it, just trying to articulate what those are. And then the publication, ultimately, this is um, just how we go about signaling to, to folks like Elizabeth uh, that this metric or metric model is ready for publication. And that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Are we going to put this in the repo somewhere so that we can link to it from the governance doc? Because we had talked about having kind of role hand, sort of role handbooks or role definitions for some of the various um, roles, and this seems like a really good one for the for the liaisons. 
Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, do you want to take that action item, Matt? Sure, I can. Do that. Okay. And then I can create a page for it or a knowledge base article for it. Okay. Yep. Is that, do we know if the government stock is up there yet? Yeah, it's merged. Okay. Yeah. We should link from the governance document to this. Yeah. Or a link governance doc to this. Okay. It will also give me a chance to take a look at the governance doc and see if there's any, like, what are the other like roles oh, that we mm -hmm. have a document like this one? I, I imagine there's one, or, or should be one for the maintainers of a repo. Mm -hmm. And for chairs. And chairs. Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. Anyone have questions about this, any of this? I, the only thing that is kind of to be sorted out a little bit on this document is where we put the issue, the, it's that publishing thing down at the bottom. Yeah. So just this whole like creation of an issue to, it's mostly to signal to, to Elizabeth that this needs to be published. It should go in my personal repo, just so, no, I'm just kidding. Um, that way I don't miss it, but yeah. It, it's well, not tagged, it's fine, I don't really care. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of whether the issue would sit in the context group from which it came or the issue would sit in say common, you know, where the metric is being developed. It's just, I'm not sure what workflow is the best there. Does anybody have thoughts on that? Anybody who's kind of been through this process before? Isn't the place that I would look for it first for what that's worth. Where would you look for it first? The place, the place where the work okay. needs to happen. So if it's a common metric that needs to be developed, I would put it in the common, okay. common working group. I, I would put it wherever, wherever the people, wherever the work is going to need to happen. It's that usually word, where word originated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So take this out. But what if a project no, requested, what if a, a working group requested a project from the commons? Common is only developing the metrics, but they are not necessarily consuming it at this point. That's correct. So. Yeah. yeah so I would think like if, if, if we had a discussion in the OSPO working group and we talked about a metric that should be developed and it was, it would logically fit in the common um, working group, I would file the issue in the common working group. I mean, that's just my, my opinion, but that's, that's how I've seen it. I've seen it done in, in other projects. You usually file the issue where, where the thing, where the work needs to happen, where the people are actually going to do that work. That's no problem. Let's do that. And I mean, to, to even further like that point is not all of the context groups have repos at this point and nor may they need them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And these are really the three common metrics models or DEI. That's right at the moment. Okay, yeah. okay cool. Seems like that decision has been made. Let's go ahead. Thanks. Um, the next one on the agenda is my um, <laughs> mine. Um, does anybody read these? <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody reads them. And it, quite honestly, it takes me about two to three hours to do them because there's just so much in there. And um, it does consist of, you know, summarizing the meeting minutes, putting the videos out. Like I kind of lump all of that together. Um, which I will continue to do because people do actually read the meeting summaries and I think people do watch the videos, but I like cross post everything everywhere. It's so redundant 
that I'm just wondering if maybe we should change things up a little bit and just put instead of like everything in the newsletter, just put these individual things as threads in discourse, or are they just going to get buried and not seen there either? What is, I want to hear what everybody thinks about uh, it. I'm not sure anybody reads discourse. So I would, I would not be inclined to put them there. Um, what if, what if we did instead of chaos weekly, what if you did it monthly and did something lighter weight, like, you know, rather than putting all of the things in the, the document, kind of highlight a couple of things and here's the link to where you can find things like that. And then like, as I still want to keep doing like chaotic of the week. Um, I like doing that, so I'll keep doing that. Uh, I could post those maybe individually on Discourse, and then I always copy and put it in Slack also. So, like, that's a thing I could post on LinkedIn and on Slack and on Discourse. Um, yeah, Discourse really hasn't worked out for us. I like it because it's, like, more stable and easier to find than Slack. Like, that was the whole reason, but nobody looks at it. <laughs> Nobody looks at it, and if you go there, it's literally just like a post by Elizabeth, like straight down. So it's like the Elizabeth show when you go there, and I don't want that. I don't want that. I want something that people use and is helpful and yeah, engaging. So yeah, that might be a whole separate com uh, <laughs> a whole separate conversation that we have. I do okay. like the I like monthly and. Even making it lighter weight, like my thoughts were, it could not even be about like summaries. It could be like, hey, we're going to be at All Things Open. We're going to be at, you know, the member summit. Um, here's what some of us are talking about. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. We had a board meeting, <laughs> whatever it might be. Just yeah. something lighter weight. That's not just so. I like that idea. That's not, here's what we talked about this week in this meeting. Yeah. And then you can have a standard set of links that never, that never change, that are always the same, that are just at the bottom. Like, you know, if you want the recaps of our meetings, go here. If you want to watch the videos, go here. If you want to do this, go here and just have like, um, just, just standard links that go to where they can find those types of things where you don't have to edit them every single month. Yeah, that's I like that. Okay, I'm gonna look over here on chat. We got some comments here. Um, yeah, discourse just has not been easy to use. People are having a hard time following it or setting their stuff up. People seem to like chaotic of the week, and I do too. So I'm gonna just make sure that that I keep doing that. We'll see. Why does chaotic of the week have to be published in discourse first and then Slack or does it not have to? You I, mentioned uh, discourse. Well, it doesn't, I, I can do it either. Um, I could, I could just skip the discourse and just do it in Slack if we want. Um, it just went in the newsletter. So then I would just copy it from the newsletter and put it in Slack. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, let's see, we have some ideas about making discourse more useful from Georg. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up and how to get emails for threads that are interesting to us. Okay, I'll just drop that in here. Discourse instructions. Uh, thought here is, I mean, I'm speaking for, for the way that I do this. Uh, when we had mailing lists, I would get the emails and I would actually read them. And discourse because I then have to click on a link to go somewhere. I don't I don't see it. I don't read it. Um, and so I know there is a way to set up Discord that it functions more like a mailing list for those like me that read emails, uh, and would prefer to have it in there. I just have never spent the time to set it up to subscribe to the forums or the threads or topics that interest me. And that was the idea. We can maybe have some, some guidance, maybe on the newcomer bot, welcome bot that says, hey, if you want to be part of these conversations that are happening in Discord, we recommend 
going in, setting, yes, you want emails for everything that's get posted on this topic. That makes it like a mailing list. And we, we explain how to use discourse. Um, that, that's one idea. I know the function is there and it could be useful. I well, speaking for myself, I've just not set it up. Yeah, no, that's totally fair. Who did I just cut off? Sorry. I feel like someone was trying to talk and I cut them off. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, well, let's try chaos monthly. I like that a lot, but I'll still do the meeting summaries and things like that. And the videos, of course, at the end of the week, if that's okay with everybody, if that works. Yeah, I like those a lot. Okay. I mean, just in Slack. And just skip discourse altogether for those, you think? I was only, I see them in Slack is where I see them. So I'm only speaking on like where I see them. Yeah. The um, I will say from, uh, well, here we can look really quick. Um, I think we get a couple dozen views on these um, per the, yeah, so like nobody looks at the Chaos Weekly, but like, you know, people do kind of look at these summaries, I think, if they're subscribed, I don't know. Um, yeah, look at that. 57 on that one. Oh, that was that was a private one. Sorry about our next board meeting. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't know what it's worth. It's like this is like an, a nice archive. <laughs> well, and I think that was the whole idea is like we made it. We talked about something at some point. When was that? And so somebody could easily just go in there and search and see the topic instead of having to go through like meeting minutes and, you know, of all the different working groups. So that was the idea. But if that's not actually working that way, that's completely valid as well. So, and, and to be perfectly honest, it doesn't really take that much more for me to do right. it in discourse and then just copy it over to Slack. Like, I don't mind. Okay, so let's try this and see. And then if people complain, they want it weekly, then I'll know. Then I'll know people are actually reading it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Oh, thanks, Sean. Okay. Data science updates. I'm going to pass this along to Dawn. Thanks. Um, one of the things I've been working on is a survey to help us understand the challenges that people face, in particular when they're using uh, chaos tools and metrics. So, um, I, I've gotten some really good feedback from people so far, uh, which has been super helpful. Um, but I just want to put this out there that if anybody um, wants to have a look at the questions and provide feedback, uh, particularly people that have lots of experience doing surveys, I got some fantastic feedback from Lauren, uh, Lawrence Hack, who's done loads of surveys. So that was super helpful. He helped me reformat my questions in ways that made a lot more sense. Um, but have a have a look. If you have any feedback, my plan is to start getting this into the Google form uh, in the next couple of days and send it out. Um, so if you have any feedback, send it to me in the next uh, day or two would be would be useful. I'll probably, if I don't get it out on Thursday, I'll send it out on Monday um, just to avoid sending it out on Friday. And, and I can use all of your help distributing the survey once we once we have it out so that we can get more people. Uh, what filling out. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so so um, I was going to post it on um, in some of our Slack channels, in particular the software Slack channels, um, Twitter, Mastodon, uh, probably probably LinkedIn as well. And then I was going to um, see if I can get the emails from past chaos cons and um, email the people who've attended our events. Um, if we have permission to email them, so that's what I need to to look at. So I'll talk to um, I'll talk to Georg, and and I would encourage other people. So I would encourage like Sean to send it out to people that you know have used Augur or use Augur or maybe used to use yeah. Augur, don't use it now. And I was going to ask the same thing from the Baturgia crew to send it out to the people that um, 
that they think might be might be interested in filling out a survey that we'd like to better understand um, people who've who've used the tools in the past. So it'll be it'll be a group effort. I'll need I'll need help from from everyone. Ruth, you have a question. Not really a question, but um, I was going to say if you're going to promote the survey on LinkedIn or like social or Twitter, you should like probably not use the direct link because like I've had issues where bot spams in like surveys. So you'd like maybe put it in uh, maybe Chaos Monthly blog post and like the link to the survey in that blog post. And then so there's like an extra step because I've had issues where you know you post like a survey link on twitter or like a social media account and then it's like there's like bot responses or like spams and all that stuff so oh that's a real that's really good feedback thank you yeah don i think a blog post You're would welcome. be excellent actually to kind of just give a little more context around it if you have time to do that i don't know i don't want to i don't want to give I you will, more time, I, will, but I will i will, I will do that. that that's excellent feedback that's something i just had never never thought of I'm just putting a note at the top of my document so I don't um, forget to do that. Thank you. Anything else on the survey? Okay. Oh, I do have actually one quick question. Um, I assume you want to create the form under the chaos uh, account, the Gmail account? I've I've actually already done that. There should okay. be in that in that account. There should be a pending um, ownership transfer. So I created it and then transferred ownership um, to the Chaos Gmail. Okay. So I think if you go in, you should see it. And if you don't, let me know um, because yes, we definitely want that to be the case. Um, I can always. I haven't. So all I've done so far is like put the logo at the top and um transferred ownership and so if you didn't get it we can we can start over if we need to okay let just let me know okay perfect cool um and then the other thing i had was um so so we created a data science slack channel so so that's great um but we haven't had uh, a lot of engagement there so i'm thinking that maybe we should start uh, just do some meetings, just start up a kind of a data science working group that meets every other week. And, and let's see if we need it as a working group. We can do it as a kind of a kind of a trial run and, and see what kind of topics we come up with, see how it works. Um, I was thinking probably just do it every other week opposite one of the other context uh, working groups. Any, any thoughts on that, I can post a doodle poll or something in the data science Slack channel and try and see which which slot might work better for people. But I'll probably I'll try to find something that's uh, works for US West Coast and and for me in Europe. I'm all I'm all for it. I'd like to talk about that, the strategy doc, too, and just kind of like mm -hmm. how fits in chaos in its entirety kind of thing. I think that'd be helpful to talk through that. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, I think that would probably be um, probably the first first agenda item, I suppose, for, for this, this group. Um, but the other thing that I would be really interested in having in some of those working groups is how, how other people are using data science-based approaches with, with chaos metrics and chaos data and get, get perspectives from some of the other other data data scientists, data analysts, other people who are working with our our data. So I'd love to get to run, that as well. Don't don't run don't run run. Run. So that's not me talking about the work that I'm doing all the time. I want to talk about what the work that other people are doing and how we can learn from it. Go ahead, Sean. Sorry, we're talking over each other. Yeah, did you want to run the survey first? Uh well, I don't think we need to run the survey before we start meeting and having data science. No, I don't know, just before the before the document gets, you know, before we settle on that, I think the survey information might be useful. Um, no, I think it's all right because I think the the document for the the strategy is so it's less of a strategy right now. It is four things that I plan on starting work on, 
and none of them are dependent on the understanding challenges um, survey because that will be once we understand those challenges that will kick off the whole next wave of things that we work on right. so i think right now it's it's mostly it's mostly just kind of the the types of types of things that i'm going to start with and then we can see kind of how the role was defined and what sorts of things we said we were going to do. Um, but yeah, we have to wait until we do the understanding challenges before we we kick off like, you know, hardcore trying to trying to make improvements for, for the community for sure. But there's some other stuff we can do in the meantime. Thanks, awesome. Cool. Any other questions? Georg had one in the chat. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the question was whether this uh, data science group is for is also meant for researchers that are looking to use chaos metrics and tools and are looking to talk with others about their research and how to use the tools and get some help on maybe get some feedback on their research design. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a ton of overlap between the the people doing doing research and um, you know, in so you know, assuming that's more on kind of the academic side and the people who are doing the data science work within companies, I think that there are a lot of the same, a lot of the same questions and a lot of the same problems and a lot of the same use cases. So absolutely I would encourage those people to attend as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, there's nothing uh, else. I'll turn I have oh. one Go question. Ahead. Do you have a yeah. sense in the OSPO working group how many people who attend the call uh, are data scientists or can do the data science work? You don't have um, to give a number, but. <laughs> <laughs> I That's a good question. I, I don't have a good feel for that. I think that there are probably a fair number of people in the OSPO working group who um probably do some some data science some data analysis for sure um I don't know if I had to guess I would say probably a quarter to a half just ballpark okay okay I was just a, I was just thinking like if there's if we would ever have any of this conversation there as well mm. you know like how we don't want to have like how to build a metric conversation there just because I don't think that's super interesting to that group, but yeah. maybe the, science, the data science conversation might be interesting to the group. Yeah, I think there is definitely definitely some overlap, and I would certainly I would certainly love for for some of those people to fill out the survey as well. So I will certainly share it with, um, you know, with the OSPO OSPO working group because I do think that there's there there should be a fair fair bit of overlap. Like I said, we won't get into any hardcore data science questions or topics, I think, in the OSPO working group, but okay. I think some of them would be interested in some of the things we talk about in the data science working group. Right on. And be, I suppose. So right what about this? I think there is a uh, working group on science. Am I right? There is. Yeah. So what is there not a kind of overlap with this? Uh, with this, what, how are we trying to harmonize things? Well, so, so far that, that group is, um, it's really a, about, it's been community managers who are helping um, in scientific software communities. So understand okay. about the sustainability of their own scientific software communities. So Pandas being an example here. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been, it's not, what Georg was describing, which was like academics who have an interest in in using data science to answer research questions. Okay. Yeah, because uh, anyway, that, that clarification is important because even in the industry today, a lot more of applied data science and AI is going on. They have tons of metrics that might be we are not even talking about it yet, but it's still part of this discussion. Yeah, so I'm I just trying to worry to if we, we can cover those space, yeah. The, the way I frame that Armstrong is in, in the scientific community, the data science work that we're doing 
would really be characterized in that domain as kind of your research software engineer work. These are the professional computer science, data science folks who are experts in, in doing this kind of analysis. And the scientists are the folks who may create a program here or there, but don't have the experience to maintain it, sustain it, um, build community around it, um, increase its robustness, the kinds of things that software engineers do. Uh, scientists tend to hack as much code as they have to to get their paper out, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it really does. A lot, of us, a lot of us attend both of those meetings, so I think we'll learn pretty quickly if there's too much overlap. Uh, which you know, I I don't know. Maybe maybe that is going to be a problem. I I don't really I don't really know yet. But I think because of quite a few of us, I think attend both of those meetings. I think we should be able to learn that pretty quickly. That's a really good point. Any other questions for Don or comments? Rock on. Thank you, Don. Thanks. Thanks, Don. Uh, okay, let's move on. We have six minutes left. So uh, let's talk about Augur for a minute. All right. So uh, uh... At one point, uh, at the very beginning, we had a pretty tight circular map between all of our chaos metrics and Augur API endpoints. And I, I would say there's a solid 65 out of 80 that still exist, but need perhaps some updating and also um, documentation to make them easier to consume. And so what we'd like to do, or what we plan to do, is create a project where um, it's a, so in the course of these meetings and in the work that we do, when we create a metric, uh, we'll make sure that there is a, a pattern. We'll, we'll lay down a pattern for creating an Augur API endpoint for a chaos metric. And that that will be like a cookie recipe. It will be very easy to follow. It will be, well, a chocolate chip cookie recipe. It will be exactly the same, except the data will change to protect the innocent. And in the, so by creating these endpoints, then then mapping the documentation of the endpoints directly to the chaos metric definition, we can also include in the chaos metric definition uh, direction back to the API endpoint, which gives the consumer of the metric definition, um, excuse me, a very concrete um, a way of understanding. So the metric is kind of an abstraction. When I read a metric, it's not entirely clear to me what what data I get from that metric. And so when there's in the metric an endpoint that says they can show you here's the JSON file that you get, that's helpful for a lot of people. And when you're a developer and, and you're looking at the array of metrics in Augur, getting being able to go see the definition of the metric is helpful for knowing exactly what it is that you're implementing. And so having these endpoints then are of course helpful for metrics models because all metrics models really are, are an accumulation of metrics. So you, you build a, a page that has the five metrics in a metrics model uh, and displays them in some way. And, and then, then you have a metric model. So this will help us, I think, also understanding who uses which metrics because we'll see who's hitting which metric endpoints um, as well. So that's that's the and so the beginning of this will be I'll, I'll lay down with the team here in the next uh, several weeks uh, basically a recipe. Here's the first metric, um, kind of a show and tell, and here's how we made it, and here's how the whole process works. And I think having that example will make it easy for new contributors to do something concrete and satisfying in Augur. Matt, I don't know if, uh, Matt and I discussed this uh, quite a bit over the last few days. I don't know if I missed anything from our discussion, Matt. Yeah, I think one of the real hopes here is to build community around software. I think mm -hmm. this is something that has um, been a hope 
for over over the years. And so trying to find a way for people to um, to participate in in the software development in um, in meaningful and kind of task driven, smaller task driven ways. And the hope is is that asking for people to contribute by uh, developing endpoints for published chaos metrics is a very like kind of small consumable task that would enable people to participate and contribute to the Augur project. I also think that that trying to build out that group of contributors on those endpoints would not only help um, in the software community, but then allow for a, a conversation with more people who are now familiar with Augur and building these endpoints as to does this change the way that we publish our metrics? Um, how do we think about these endpoints in relation to say the context groups? Like, I'm not sure what this would look like, but we'd have a, you know, a lot of people who have more uh, experience and contributions to Augur who can participate in those, those conversations as well. Yeah, so and I think, really I think the ultimate, yeah, the ultimate goal would be, it could, it could become, I think it could be very cookie cutter um, to add an endpoint. Because I can't imagine a data-driven data for which a data-driven metric for which Augur doesn't get the data. So I yes, think it yeah. could be a cookie cutter. The idea is to really lower that barrier to entry. To entry, to yeah. To, to software. You don't have to learn the whole mess that is Augur. You do not. You, you just need <laughs> the to the beautiful mess. The... <laughs> just need to understand how to create those endpoints. I don't know what people's thoughts are on this. I know we are, we have zero time, so you can just think your thoughts, and I will read your brain. <laughs> we are ha we can continue uh, next week, um, but in the meantime, is there a place where we can have async conversations about this? Yeah, certainly. I mean, this could be in in the general channel. I think this is completely affects the entire project. Yeah, I think the general channel is a good place for it. Excellent. Um, and then, sorry, because since we are out of time, I'm not sure who put this on, but is it okay if we defer to next week? Um, yeah, I put that there, but I'm sure we can discuss it next week. It's just adding to all that, um, all the previous topics before now on understanding who is using our metrics, how they're using it, and possibly where they're using it, but then having it all in one place. So we can always just go there for reference. I think it's a great idea. Agreed. So let's continue that. Just Anita's doing this with the DEI metrics in that this is, so she and I were talking just before this meeting. So that's kind of where it came up. Like not only understanding the DEI metrics, but then also the, like the trace data metrics. I all agree, it's a really great idea. Thanks, Anita. And then the other one we're gonna to defer to next week is from Armstrong who um, commented in the chat about Zoom's new policies. So sorry, Zoom, but yeah. And then someone has put a little bit more context. So we'll just kind of continue that conversation next week. Um, Cause that they've, is important. They've backed off some of the, some of those changes. Um, not, it's not great, but it's, it's not as bad as what they had announced earlier this week. Seems like a, a strategy to just be super horrible. And then you come back and you're not quite as horrible, but still horrible. good for not being quite but as then you don't well, so, bad, the, right? so the, the difference is that they're allowing um, administrators, administrators and account holders to opt in or not. So we as the chaos project can choose whether to opt in or not. Okay, um, that's that's helpful. Yes. Um, okay, well, thanks, everybody. We will continue these conversations next time. And have a great rest of your day. See you later. Thanks, Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye. See you later. <laughs>